so happy we alive. Good evening, and welcome to Louisville Late Night. This evening, we're at the beautiful Crown Plaza Hotel in gorgeous San Francisco, California. Has a lot in common with Louisville there, and uh, in the beauty department. And uh, this evening, I am just absolutely thrilled to have with with us a uh, remarkable person and a uh, remarkable physician. He is uh, Dr. Thomas O'Connell of the uh, Bay Area and uh, I'm going to let you get to know Tom by speaking to him directly but uh, just a couple of things uh, that are I think pertinent is that uh, Within the realm of medicine, there's, there's many different uh, specialties, as, as everyone knows. And uh, all, all physicians work together a team, as a team, and, and what everyone does, not just physicians, nurses, our whole healthcare system, and what everyone does uh, makes a difference. But uh, within the medical uh, program, within our medical system, there's some people uh, some individuals, some groups of individuals, and uh, who, what they do or what they don't do doesn't just make a uh, small difference and an eventual difference. It makes an immediate difference and an absolute difference and frequently a, uh, a uh, life and death type of uh, a difference. And uh, uh, Thomas O'Connell is not only a surgeon, but uh, He's a cardiovascular surgeon and uh, has spent a good part of his life uh, working as a surgeon and working in private practice here in San Francisco. And uh, early on in his career, I know that uh, he had some extensive uh, exposure uh, working for the uh, military, the U.S. government. And uh, Tom. Uh, is at a point where he is focusing not simply on his cardiovascular uh, medical practice, but he is going back to some to being involved with some root issues having to do with health care and and uh, and what it means to be healthy and and uh, and the broad issues of uh, medical care and and specifically the uh, pesky little issue of medical marijuana. And uh, in addition to this specific issue, uh, Tom lives and, and functions. Uh, his gift to us uh, is in his thinking and, and his uh, strategic penetrating insight into, into the nature of, of problems. And this is what's so wonderful about surgeons and what makes them so much fun to work with is that these people don't just see the, the uh, an endless morass of possibilities and, and so forth like that. They're, they're people who somehow have the ability to, to come down to cut through what the issues are, what's, what counts, what doesn't count, and they just don't have enough time and energy to bullshit around. And, uh, and, and sometimes uh, society or whatever can uh, portray surgeons. Uh, I mean, sometimes maybe it's like uh, on MASH they're, where they're compassionate and, uh, and fun, fun people to some extent. But other than that, sometimes uh, other uh, images are, are put forth. And, and for the most part, surgeons just don't have the time in the... Uh, <laughs> the inclination to, to even bother defending themselves. It's like they're doing a frickin' hard job and we're frickin' lucky they're doing it. Especially in these days with uh, the AIDS epidemic and all the exposure that, uh, that uh, people working in acute care medicine uh, are exposed to. 
So, what I'm saying about Tom is that he has these little pearls of wisdom that what we uh, Catholic type uh, people uh, are analogous to like papal bulls. It's like he doesn't like the popes over the last 20 centuries. Tom doesn't just uh, just sit down and write a verse or two every once in a while. It's more like he really thinks through a situation, a problem, and every once in a while he'll post a little what I call a Tom O'Connell uh, papal bull on the internet and share uh, his really profound insight uh, with the rest of us who are wondering what the heck to do with this devil. the people that I've interviewed in the, mo in the movement, uh, the reform movement, uh, I'm, I'm just happiest <laughs> probably as, as, as any, and, and there have been some wonderful people on the show, but uh, having Tom O'Connell here is a special, very special thing, and uh, I'm going to shut the heck up and uh, just let Tom maybe talk a little bit about uh, what his experience has been. He's had a, a long life of uh, helping people in all kinds of situations. And to me, it's just fantastic to see somebody like this, who's already given so much, coming back in and just see, just going up and, you know, for the right thing and giving some more. So anyway, Tom O'Connell. Hi, Patrick. You want me to just keep going, or? No, uh, I want you to, to tell us a little bit about. Uh, is there anything you want to comment about your life as a as a surgeon before we get into your more recent? Uh... Oh, I, I just uh, enjoyed surgery. I became a doctor because my mother wanted me to. And well, that's a, that's, really, a, that's a good motivation. Without really uh, thinking much further than that, but. Uh, when it became time to decide what I wanted to actually do in medicine, I was lucky to find surgery because it was uh, the, the type of practice that appealed most to me. Yeah. Where did you go to med school? Uh, New York Medical College in New York City. So you're a New Yorker? Originally, yes. I haven't lived there for a long time. But uh -huh. Lived in the city and also upstate in a little town called Ithaca. Uh huh. Went to Cornell, came back to the city to medical school, and then came out here to San Francisco to do my internship. Uh -huh. And from there, I went into the Army uh, because that was a good way to get post-medical uh, school residency training in those days. This was in the, in the late 50s. I began my residency in general surgery in 59 in, in Texas uh, at Beaumont Army Hospital in El Paso. Then I spent uh, four years in Japan serving as a general surgeon in the Tokyo area. And during that time, uh, the Vietnam War started in earnest. And what many of your viewers may not know is that <coughs> Japan became the major support, the medical support area for uh, casualties from Vietnam. Starting, oh, really? Starting about November uh, 1965. Yeah, when I went there in 63, there were 120 army beds in a, in a old Japanese military hospital outside Tokyo, and they were the only army beds in Japan. When I came home in August of 67, there were 3,000 beds that oh, had wow. been inserted into old warehouses and uh, other buildings which were essentially reconstructed from the inside. Did you work as a surgeon then in yes, Japan? Yes, as a general from, surgeon. From, from uh, I mean, casualties from Vietnam came over? Yeah, they could. They were flown out of uh, Tatsunu uh, and flown directly to Yakota. So you're kind of like, a, like a mash guy then. Well, it was the, the Vietnam.